To fully develop a muscle, you need to train it in a variety of ways. However, with the biceps, every isolation exercise is some sort of bicep curl. Just because you're doing different types of bicep curls doesn't necessarily mean you're getting any variety in your muscle activation. It's possible that your routine of barbell curls, cable curls, dumbbell curls, and machine curls are all doing the exact same thing and not giving you any variety at all. After watching this video, you'll have no shortage of several unique ways to train your biceps to make sure you're hitting them in every possible way. I'm Dr. David Gunnerman of Blue Star Nutraceuticals, and welcome to the Rad Lab. Here are three things to focus on to help develop sleeve splitting biceps. Number one, where is the peak tension? The key to training your biceps is understanding that with any given exercise, there's only one point where the tension is at its highest. If you want to hit your biceps differently, you need to be changing where that peak intensity is. Maximum force occurs when the forearm is perpendicular to the direction of the force. In regards to free weights, this happens when your forearm is horizontal. With cable exercises, it occurs when the forearm is perpendicular to the cable. For example, during a preacher curl, the forearm is horizontal closer to the bottom of the contraction. During an upright curl, the forearm is horizontal in the middle of the contraction. And during a spider curl, the forearm is horizontal at the top of the contraction. Likewise, away facing cable curls targets the lower range. Upright cable curls targets the mid range. And these target the upper range. The only exception to this are some particular bicep machines that can provide continuous tension throughout the range of motion. Incorporating some machine bicep curls can add some variety. The takeaway here is to always select a variety of exercises where the peak tension occurs at varying points of the contraction. Number two, shoulder extension. Since both heads of the biceps cross the shoulder joint, you can add variation with the exercises by changing the level of extension of the shoulder. Extension of the shoulder will increase the stretch of the bicep tendons and thus add additional tension to the exercise, making it more difficult. This is great for high volume exercises. For heavier lifts, shoulder flexion puts less strain on the bicep tendons, causing less irritation at the shoulder capsule. Number three, hand grip. The third function of the biceps, besides elbow flexion and some shoulder flexion, is supination. Therefore, hand grip does matter to manipulate the level of bicep activation in the lift. There are three muscles that are involved with flexing the elbow, but only the biceps are involved in supination. An easy curl grip gets the most combined activation of all the elbow flexors. However, in order to target the biceps specifically, you need to either curl in a completely supinated grip or combine the supination action as part of the exercise. With all these variations of force direction, degree of shoulder flexion, and hand position, there should be no shortage of ways to train your biceps to make sure you're training them with the maximum amount of variation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to hit the like button for more validated research and real scientific answers to sports nutrition and exercise science. Just hit subscribe and find out everything you wanted to know or afraid to ask.